recorded live. Okay. Hey, this is Michael again. It's all the religion dystopia, knowing versus belief. And uh, hey, <laughs> got a new guest. It's a busy week this week for sure when it comes to interviews and doing everything else I got to do. Um, but uh, uh, we're going to be talking to a lady that I've known about now for several months through Laura Maxwell and her interviews with her and um it was very interesting about uh, this lady her lady her name is Dana Thompson Emanuel and if we look here on uh, spir- uh our spiritual com, and this is just a little bit I mean I'm just going to relive it so this is your ex ghost hunter Dana Emanuel led a successful paranormal investigation team con- uh, conducting paranormal investigations across Florida, the USA. She abandoned it in 2011 after hearing Laura or Maxwell share the truth about the alleged ghost and revelation on Revelation Television around the time Dana and her family were being terrorized and attacked by demons masquerading as ghosts. And Dana, I want to thank you uh, for joining me. Uh, we haven't really had a chance to talk yet, um, or, but we're going to have a chance now. All thank right. you for joining me. <laughs> thank you, Mike. And it's a pleasure to be here. I'm, it's, a, I, it's, a, it's an honor for me to be able to be on your show. I like your show. I've been listening to your show. I love you, uh, a lot of your guests that you've had on. Um, so yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks. Yeah, there's uh, Dana has her own YouTube channel, exposing the enemy, and I will put it in the information box. She's been writing articles. I believe that the articles are. Where are you writing your articles at? Where's the the blog you're doing that in? Is that in Laura's? Uh, exactly. And then uh, uh, Laura has. Uh, she posts some of my articles. Uh, you know, on her YouTube. I'm I'm sorry, on her website. And then I have my own website. It's it's uh, www.exposingtheenemy.com, and it starts with the X. I drop the E off the front of it. Okay, so that's good to know. Theenemy.com, exposingtheenemy.com. So uh, yeah, this is, should be interesting. I know you've had a chance now quite a few times through Laura and, and and it's kind of picking up some speed here as far as people's that, hey, Dana has something to share. And um, yeah. there's there's truth in what I just said. Uh, that's why I have her on right now. Um, uh, being an, an ex-ghost hunter. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I laugh at, you know, my, my, my uh, direction and how I got into this was through uh, Bigfoot. And basically Bigfoot, and what we're going to talk about as far as goats, ghosts, and quotes are basically, we're talking about the same thing, folks. And wow. so it, it, it notice I've been having uh, uh, people who have had uh, paranormal experiences, because if I can find Bigfoot in the middle of my town, and he shows up in my backyard, I'm sure... And there's quite a strong correlation there, and especially when you, when you put all the pieces together. So, anyways, so your so your direction is a little different than mine. Uh, I never was ever interested in the paranormal. I mean, I from the stuff on the television, all that. I just thought it was absolute silliness. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. then God got a hold of me. And he says, "Mike, I want you to go down this road and look at Bigfoot." And I'm like, "Really, yeah. God?" I wasn't even interested in Bigfoot until a year ago, and so next thing you know, yeah. uh, after the year of thorough investigation, it's self-evident that we're dealing with uh, evil spirits, demons, um, the demonic realm. Yeah. And so wow. I think it would be interesting is to uh, go into... Now, a lot of folks, if you want to, you can get Laura's show and all that uh, and hear um, Dana's testimony. I'm hoping this one, maybe you could share a little more in detail, if you can. I mean, it's too much. I don't know. 
uh, as uh-huh. far as what you were experiencing back in 2011 with being terrorized, tormented by these de- these demons, you know, how it, how they they became part of your life type of thing. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I try yeah. to figure out why on earth would you even get involved with a paranormal creature? <laughs> <laughs> Go become a ghost hunter, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then yeah. again, I'm sure a lot of people think the same thing about me. Uh, in fact, I know that when it comes to Bigfoot, they're like, what? <laughs> right. What happened What happened to Mike? He's gone nuts. He's gone up his rocker. <laughs> so, you know, this is all new to me. This is all new to me. The Bigfoot thing that you're talking about, I knew that mm-hmm. there was a, uh, you know, a high interest in it, but, you know, amongst the paranormal community even. But I never knew. I never linked that with anything spiritual until just now. Or and I heard it last night on your show with um, with Mark Hunman. So I didn't even know that. And you're you're opening my eyes to something here. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, good to know. Good information. You know, we need to know these things. We need to be uh, aware of the enemy's tactics. And it sounds oh, yeah. like that's one of them. You know. Absolutely, is one of them. So. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so yep. so. You know, about a decade ago, a little earlier than that, a little less than that, you were involved in the strange world of the paranormal research. What the heck possessed you? (laughs) Yeah, what happened? I I, I know, right? Well, I was always interested in, um, you know, ghost stories and stuff like that, you know. Uh, When I was a kid, I'd go to my dad's house. Now, I was in the church. I, you know, believed to be a Christian. I, you know... I uh, believed in Jesus, but I wasn't a Jesus follower, you see. I I would go mostly on holidays or whenever my dad would drag me to church. I wasn't serious with it. But, um, you know, I did believe he was real, and I believed he was who he said he was and is who he is, I mean, you know. But um, but anyway, um, we would watch ghosts, any any movies related to the uh, hauntings or exorcisms or anything like that. My mom didn't allow it, but my mom and dad was divorced, and when I'd go to my dad's house, I, that's where I'd watch the scary movies and stuff, you know. Um, and then I would have, you know, kids, uh, friends growing up, and we would always, you know, have sleepovers, and we would play games like Mary Mary, you know, in, you know, in the bathroom, on, you know, in the mirror and stuff, and we would play uh, light, light as a feather, stiff as a board, you know. But in these things, nothing ever happened, so I – you know, I thought it was an infatuation, uh, more or less, with me, but I, I didn't believe it. Can I ask you? Can I interrupt you just a little bit? This is yes, for sure. folks like me that have never played what you just said. Mary, Mary. Yeah. I think there's something else out there right now that's probably similar that's been kind of uh, hit in the way, uh, as far as on the Internet world, and I can't think of the name of it now. Harry, yeah. Harry, or Henry, Henry, or I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> and then what What was the other one called again? Uh, light as a feather, uh, stiff as a board. <laughs> it's where, like, a, one of the kids would would lay down straight and try to just, you know, be really stiff, and the other kids would go underneath and put their fingers underneath the body all the way around and would, would just chant, you know, light as a feather, stiff as a board, and, you know, would try to get the body to levitate and see if they could try to, you know, lift the body up. Um, it never worked. Uh. Uh, you know, for us or anything. It was just fun to think that it might work, you know. Um, And we would do stuff like that. But, you know, it wasn't until I really experienced my own, uh, until I had a paranormal experience of my own, that's when I started questioning, okay, what is this? (laughs) You know, is it a part of spirit of of my grandfather, you know, because it was in my my grandfather's old house is where it happened at. And, um, you know, or what? Because I always, I've always heard in, in church, you know, when you die, you go to either heaven or hell, you know, depending on whether you're a believer or not. But right. um, my grandfather and I'm thinking, well, you know, I know he believed in everything. Well, if he's here in this house, you know, why is he here? You know, I mean, I, that's when I started really questioning the paranormal. And I started, you know, trying to solicit EVP, EVPs and, you know, try to talk to spirits. And we'd go to graveyards and things like that and try to you know, try to get some EVPs and pictures and stuff like that, you know. <clears throat> and it just so happened the first night that I actually, we actually did go 
to a graveyard and get tried to get some evidence. We did get evidence, you know. It's kind of weird. It's like, but then again, it's not because that's how the how the enemy, you know, lures us in. You know, uh, once Correct. we get that evidence, then we want to go even more, you know, and get into it even more, you know. Um, and, and you know, until you're really hooked, <laughs> you could be um, evidence driven, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, sure. If, yeah. I I personally think at this point it's actually it's a, it's a form of uh, demonization is what it is. Uh, that's my opinion. Yes. Uh, no, because you, you know when I the same happens with Bigfoot and uh, you get out there in the field and you start having all this validation and you're like, whoa, what's really going on? And you want to know more and more and more, and that's exactly what the demonic realm wants you to do. They wanted yeah. you to um, uh, pay attention to them and worship them and forget about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, uh, Amen. Yes, you're right. Um, you're right. But yep. uh, fortunately, and I was, I was for about a couple of weeks, I was really buying into it until God really s- smacked me and allowed those things to come actually follow me home. Which I yeah. believe that you're, you're going to share with us too—that very similar situation. And when they followed yeah. me home, then you know I discovered he used that yeah. for me to discover of all things deliverance. I had no idea about deliverance. I had no idea. Yeah. Here I've been a church of Christian for you know God got a hold of me in 2012, but deliverance was never part of his teachings with me. And yeah. so, but. <laughs> When you deal with the, the, the demonic realm, oh, yeah, you're going to start learning about deliverance. That's for sure. <laughs> Amen. You're right. You're so right. You are right about that. And that's the people that usually get into the deliverance. You notice that? It's people that's actually oh. been through it and they understand, you know, um, or unless they have someone close to them that's gone through it. Um, but, yes, you're so right about that. It's like coming into uh, Christianity from the back door. <laughs> I mean, it's what it feels like, you know, like, oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, yeah I, I, I yeah. couldn't find any churches that would do deliverance. Um, you know, we just got uh, well. I mean, I'm not gonna say lucky, but we were blessed to uh, find one that actually did do deliverance. You know, after everything had happened. <laughs> um, but I thought it yeah. was my husband that had an attachment, but it wasn't. <laughs> you know, isn't that uh, so disturbing? How the body of Christ has no idea about this in general overwhelming yes. if they do they think it's some kind of fringe uh cultish yes. kind of aspect of the the, the faith but in truth yeah. it's not and and you know for me the same the same situation i had to do it through via the phone someone had to teach me via the phone and uh the gentleman that was teaching me via the phone was actually somebody who actually was is living in uh I think he's in Florida now. Yeah, he's been in Florida for a while, but he's been all over the place. An old cow, oh, an old cow, an old cowboy who's been uh, uh, freeing people from these uh, Bigfoot spirits and the demonic realm. But you know, really? he, yeah, and then uh, several other folks through Ted Line and um, and a guy named Michael Vistica, which actually did a show of him actually praying for me because I had. Huh. I was, it's, Terrible spiritual attacks, witchcraft, and I had a yeah. migraine for like two months after I had wow. this terrible attack, and uh, I, I needed oh, serious deliverance. Um, yeah, which is interesting because you know part of the thing too is to discover as a Christian that it's not you just because you go through once you know a deliverance doesn't mean you're done, <laughs> and if you get in this right. battle, you better really yeah. put on the full armor of God and what that means, but. Anyways, okay. back to the beginning. So I'm sorry because I, you know, I already feel like I know okay. you from listening to several shows. So I'm just like, and I know that's kind okay. of selfish because I want to, I want to get past the intro. You know what I mean? Let's just get into right. it. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I know so, how but, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So, but. well, why don't we get back into this? So you are uh, doing these. Uh, so you already are geared primed thanks to the the culture that we live in which is basically run by a bunch of witches i tries me nuts to think that people think that christians are running the show or around here um i think to be a lot different sure that was the case so but you know what i mean but um 
And uh, so this is back then, and, and already they've been pushing this stuff on folks. Plus the fact that you have, uh, you know, the child and being curious, and you want to have fun, and you want to, and the humdrum of life. Uh, you always want something a little more exciting. So, uh, yeah. Were there anything else was going on? Okay, so you, you before you got into this uh, investigation stuff, I mean, what what was your life like? I mean, I know you were kind of strayed from the faith and all that kind of stuff. And if that is anything yeah. like me, which, I mean, I didn't even have the faith, and I was a man of the world, and I just did about every, broke about it. Well, I broke every commandment, and I was just about as bad as you can get. But I don't know, who were you yeah. before getting I think a lot of times, uh, well, I was, like I said, my mom and dad were uh, divorced, and um, I know this is personal, I, you know, but I'll go ahead and say it. Uh, when I was two, um, I started having a major emotional breakdown, and my mom had to take me to the hospital because I, I was crying and jerking, and uh, she didn't know what was wrong with me. It scared her to death, and she took me to the hospital. And come to find out, I had a nervous breakdown. So I was two years old and had a nervous breakdown. And it had to do with my mom and dad. You know, when they were getting divorced, it was a rough divorce. And, well, let me tell you um, something. Before you go further, this is just to uh, commiserate with you. When I was about that age, about one or in, in some months, I ended up, I was, there was a day I was just crying so bad that I ended up having uh, a hernia and had to get go to the doctor to have some kind of operation. So uh, wow. something traumatic was going on in my life too. Yeah. And it's neglect yep. or whatever about that same time. So that's interesting that you brought that up because there are some significance to that, you know, as far as yes, leading it, to, you yes, know, it is. becoming yes, it more is. And, influence. And, yeah. Go ahead. And a lot of times when uh, things like that happen, well, you know, anytime trauma happens, demons can enter. And uh, they, you know, come in any, a lot of ways. And I think it also had a lot to do with um, unforgiveness issues, you know, uh, being mad at this parent or being mad at that parent. And, you know, uh, I believe a lot of times that, and, and also rebellion, you know, when you get mad at one parent, you're supposed to honor your mother and father. That's the main commandment of the Bible besides honoring God and loving him with all our soul, might, and strength and our neighbors, you know, but it's, you know, that's the first commandment that actually gives us promises so, so so long of you know, of life is to honor your mother and father. And if you uh if that's broken, you know, and you you don't honor one of your parents, I mean, even even if, no matter how your parent is, you still in God's eyes, you have to honor them. You know what I mean? You still have to do your part, you know, and just pray about it and stuff. But I think a lot of resentment, rebellion, um, it's it's the uh, perfect ingredients for something uh, major to come up in life. You know, um, even even what, what I went through, really, you know. Um, and I found out later that my dad, uh, like I said, he was a Christian, and he still is, uh, very strong in his faith. But there was a time that he uh, dabbled with a uh, widgie board and table tipping with a girlfriend that he he started dating after him and my mom separated so uh, and I was shocked to find that out <laughs> I just actually found that out like the last year <clears throat> and I was shocked to hear oh, yeah. but you know he said a table flew out <laughs> you know it, oh it did yes it did he went to his girl the girl's house and uh when he opened the door he, the table had had it, they were right in the middle of doing a seance, and he said it, it it was up off the floor, and when he opened the door, it just shot across the room, and he literally had to duck and fall down and it, for it you know for it to miss hit him so it that's when he that's when he no longer had nothing to do with a girl <laughs> it scared him <laughs> you know, but he said that he did try it a few times with them, you know and stuff, so you know. Um, anytime that we entertain that stuff too, you know, that's giving the demons legal rights to come in and, and, uh, you know, and, and then on top of their tactic of getting us interested on top of it, you know, and, and, uh, just really wel welcoming them with open arms, you know, uh, when, when we're playing with this stuff, you know, um, like I said, it becomes like evidence driven, you know, you just want to get that perfect evidence to show people, you know, and it's, it got really pretty bad, you know. <clears throat> it's it, to me, it really does remind me of someone on drugs. They can't get enough, and they 
you know, everything happens and comes against it, it seems like, and you all of a sudden you'll stop getting the evidence and, you know, it's just you'll spend all kind of money yeah. trying to, you know, reenact some kind of haunting or evidence someone else got before you want to go to that certain place that they got that evidence and you know it's so common you know if you look at all them places like ghost adventure guys that they went to i think the one that i was really infatuated with was the goldfield hotel i don't know if you ever heard of that uh but you know it was the ghost adventure guys went there and a brick was thrown at them in the basement and we used to always talk about how we was going to go to the goldfield hotel you know, but it's always, you know, wanting to reenact and get that evidence, you know, and stuff. But uh, I think it's got a lot to but do with it, wanting to, uh, you know, be the one to get it, too. You know, it's all, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's not right. <laughs> but, What's interesting about the throwing of stuff, and that's like with this uh, demonic activity, like with the Bigfoot, it's the same thing, you know, people that... Uh, I mean, I know people that have had their collarbone broken, broken, and that kind of stuff, having logs or yeah. rocks thrown at them. And, oh, I uh, can't you know, and you, I, I yeah, we, 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 uh, it. <laughs> you know, we uh, we're definitely going to go over that because I remember that story very well. Um, the yeah. uh. Yeah, but so this this paranormal activity and this whole driving to be the first or to, you know, hey, I got this something really special. People need to know about this. Um, yeah, which yeah. is what I was going through, and then you know, yeah, and I, and it is being um, a Bible believing Christians, you know, spiritual Christians is like you, you have to walk across. It's just, there's a a a line, a fine line you must walk across. And if you don't yeah. put Christ first on all this, you will get in trouble. And if it's not about actually exposing the enemy in the darkness of this world, uh, even if your right. desperate motive is about without the, the full armor of God, you're going to get yourself into trouble, I can tell you that. Yes. <laughs> yes. You. yes. Amen. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, uh, yep. yep. That's so true. So you had a dad, and he was involved with that, and it seems, yeah, so, you know, you could talk about, you know, the, the possibility of, of generational curses and all that kind of stuff, but I think also it's just a cultural thing, uh, a cultural yeah. curse that we're under where, uh, you know, the the Word of God is just vacant. It's void in most people's lives. Most people have no idea what the Word of God is actually talking about, or even when it comes to demons and all that. And so and their whole idea of demons is a little skewed thanks to um, well, Satan and his, his world system and blinding people. So, But, you know, yeah. so your dad's doing this stuff. You're starting. So did that kind of intrigue you as well, hearing that kind of stuff? Like maybe there's something more yeah. to this? or Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I had uh, an aunt. Uh, she passed away this last year, you know, um, and I, uh, oh man, she's such a strong believer too. Uh, she was my aunt Wanda and she was like, she's my favorite aunt. And every time I go there, she was always really fascinated with the supernatural. Um, but it was always more or less like hearing God's voice or talking about, you know, angels, things like that. Um, but she did have a couple hauntings of her own and that she, you know, had told me about through the years and, they were dealing with shadow people and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And like hearing a dog barking in her bathroom, no, nothing's in there, no dogs outside or anything. And uh, she would hear like somebody sobbing in the bathroom. It's just all kinds of stuff. And then um, one time she had told me about they had to get a minister to come over and he started praying through her house. And by the time he reached that back bathroom and he was praying and everything, he said, all, they said all of a sudden that, something like a wind just went out the ba the bathroom window when it did there was a couple little whatnots up in the window sill that knocked over too you know and and it was just that was the first time i ever even heard of a deliverance or house clearing or anything you know and that was when i was a kid i heard about that you know but um and i don't even know what pastor that was either because like i said i had never heard of <laughs> any around here that done that. So I think that they were blessed to know someone that did, you know, and everything sure. uh, hearing stuff like that. And of course, like when the movie exorcist come out and, you know, polar guys and stuff like that, you know, I was just I always driven by it. Anything on related to it. I was always infatuated with it, you know? Um, but like I said, it did, it did make me question 
the Bible. It did make me question eternity and what, you know, what lies in the, you know, what's in store for us, you know, in the hereafter and stuff. And, um, you know, with the notion of ghosts, it really does teach that somehow these spirits, when they cry out, that God doesn't hear them, but the ghost hunter can. You know, they'll pick up on their EVPs and their, you know, their recordings and stuff. Oh, I'm hearing a little child that said that they need help getting over into the light and all this stuff. All that <laughs> is is a form. It's a form of the false teaching of uh, post-mortem salvation, you know, that somehow they're going to get saved after death. And that's false, you know. Um, and, and, the, and God does know everything that goes on. He's all-knowing. Um, you know, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good, you know, and it, 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 the Bible talks about how, you know, he knows everything that's going on. You know, he knows every hair on our head. Um, he knows every time a sparrow hits the ground out of a tree. And he says, how much more um, do you mean to me than a sparrow, than many sparrows? You know what I mean? So I, we know that God, God and Jesus does not forsake us ever. He will not leave us nor forsake us. And with that belief, that basically says it takes away our hope. You know, it's basically saying that Jesus forsook us, you know, especially the children. You know, people would say, oh, well, what about those that are evil? Well, Jesus isn't with them, you know, but, you know, come on, what about the children, you know, that they claim to hear, you know? Um, that's exactly what that would be saying, you know? There's so many verses that, that, that go against that, you know? Um, it talks about, oh, right, here's a good one. It's in Job 34. It says, in a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no dark darkness nor shadow of death where the worker of iniquity may hide themselves. So right there says, that, you know, even in death. You know, he always knows what's going on. You know, um, it's just, it, 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 what it does is it's just the enemy's way of perverting the Bible to get people to doubt the Bible. You know, um, that's why a lot of people start go, whoa, wait a minute. Now, you know, I thought we go to heaven or hell, you know, just like the story of Lazarus, you know, the, the rich man and the, and the, and the beggar, you know, it uh -huh. talks about, he begged Abraham, you know, to go tell my family, you know. Go tell my family, or my, I think it's his brothers, um, to not come to this place. And he said, you know, first off, there's a great golf fix, which means not movable. You know, um, I know one day everybody will go before the throne of God, you know, and, and be judged. But God will be the one that does that. You know, they're not, they can't just leave and come back, uh, you know, and everything. And it said, if. It, and he and Abraham told him, he said, if if they believe not Moses and the prophets, they're not going to believe though one come back from the dead. You know, proof of the death of people that are dead, ghosts or demons or anything like that is not what's going to persuade people. It's going to be the gospel that persuades people. You know, when Jesus, uh, say, for instance, um, when they came to Jesus and asked him, are you the one? Okay, it said, and John calling unto him, Two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, "Art thou he that shall come, or shall or look we for another?" Then the men were come unto him and said, "John the Baptist has sent us to thee, saying, Art thou uh, him that should come, or we look for another?" In that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind, and he gave sight. Then Jesus answered and said, "Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard." How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. To the poor, the gospel is preached. That's how people will come to know. It's the signs that Jesus, you know, of the healings and of the gospel. That's what's going to persuade people, not proof of ghosts or demons, you know. Um, that was my problem. I always kept thinking, well, you know, even after I come out of it. Because I still had those things that I wanted to show people, you know, oh, look at this. It's really proof, you know, these demons exist, you know, they really do. But God, Jesus didn't say, did you show them the devils are real or did you show them what devils can do? You know, he, did, he doesn't say that. That's not how we persuade people of the gospel, you know. 
gospel is proof of yeah. what Jesus has done and what he's done. You know, that's what we have to focus on. You know, and that's 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 a good thing. You know, that's that's such a good thing. I mean, wow. <laughs> you know what he did for us, man. <laughs> It's it's amazing. It's a love like no other, you know. It's a love like no other. Um, Amen. But, yeah, and, and you know, it, it, you you bring up a valid point and something that I struggle with because here I am, and I know what you're saying is the absolute truth that that's what matters the most in all of this. If it doesn't lead to Jesus Christ, it, what does this matter at all? What I'm doing, but the same right, token, right. Uh, it's like. Um, It's like I feel a burden and a responsibility all of a sudden because I know the truth about this to warn everyone else. Yeah. And I don't know how you feel about that, but I, and I'm sure you do. I mean, and, and uh, but you know, it's like um, when you realize that these what people are doing is they're, they're messing with the, the devil and his demons, and that this is a grand deception that's going on, and which will lead to their eternal destruction. It's like what do I do, God? I can't just not do nothing about this. I got to at least Amen. warn these people. I mean, these people yes. are we're really. In, uh, I mean, when you look at the connections between the false gospels that are out there, the false Christ, and then the witchcraft that's going on, which is something that the body of uh, God's people have been struggling with since the get go. This whole thing yeah. about witchcraft. And what all witchcraft is is just the summoning of these demons and using them yeah. for your own personal yeah. power. And so, uh, you know, you're just like, God, what do I do? What do I, I do? know, I know. It's and every sad. time, every time, I, every time I put up a video where I just like I ent- a multiple uh, uh, image of these entities, I'm like, God, am I? What am yeah. I doing? But you know, I, I really feel that at this point, the, the, the church is such in a grand, it's such in a stupor, such an it's been so indoctrinated by the this world. Yeah. Uh, religion and the philosophies of men and false science called uh, scientism, which in itself is a religion, that people are believing in anything and everything. And they think, well, you know, it's this is what I believe in, and I have a right to it. I'm like, yeah, you do, but you also got to understand the consequences of your decisions that mostly aren't even yours. Somebody else put them in your head. And you never gave it, yeah. you know, God a shot, you know. So I don't know. I mean, what, what do you do, right. Dana? I mean, what do we do in this situation? It's so frustrating. Not much you it's, know. It's, yes, you have a burden for the lost brother, just like I do. And I, I feel that I, I totally feel you. <laughs> I am in the same boat. We're all in the same boat, you know. And, and it's so frustrating because the world looks so great compared to our the message that we can deliver. We feel like nothing compared to how much society has come against Jesus or anything that remotely, you know, uh, looks like Jesus. I mean, it's so um, rejected now. And you feel it's an overwhelming feeling sometimes that it's just too hard, you know, to, to, to convince someone. But if you think about it, you know, Jesus told us to go tell them. He didn't say go convince them. And you know what? When I was in it, when I was in the paranormal, I had people come and tell me, you know, that, um, Dana, these things are demons you're dealing with. You know, watch what you're doing. But you know what? My heart wasn't right. I wanted that stuff. I was, I, I, that's what I wanted. That's, I didn't want the truth yet, you know. It wasn't until they prayed for me, and they did plant those seeds, though, and those seeds were in my mind. And even though I rejected them at the time, as things started going on, and I know that I know that things got ugly. In my heart, I feel like they got ugly because my family was praying for me to see them for what they were. And while that, in in combination with the planted seeds in my head, when these things started coming forth and showing me what they really were, um, I was, you know, out of my head, you know, oh, wow, God, maybe they are really all demons. And I was really questioning this, you know. Those seeds that you plant will not come back to un- void, you know. You plant the seeds of the gospel, and I'm telling you, uh, you might not convince them right then, and it might seem like it's not fruitful. But you know what? 
you just pray about it and everything. And, and you know, I, I'm not sure I have the verse in front of me, but where God says, you know, and one will plant the seed, the other one will come and water it, you know, and he'll bring it to harvest or something like that. It does work that way. We're never going to be able to convince everybody now of it. All we can do is share the gospel. And you know what? If we feel like we can do it in a different way than what God tells us to do, we're doing. We're leaning on our own understanding, and because it does say it's the pow, the gospel is the power. You know what I mean? The power is the gospel itself. And even though they seem like they don't want to hear it, and they don't, you know, and all this, that's still what's going to get them to believe. You know what I mean? It, it really does. It's got that power behind it, you know. Um, and, and I and I'm with you. I totally understand what you're saying, you know, because like I said, I I've had I I have had a lot of pictures and stuff like that, you know. Um, I have an old computer that a lot of it's still on actually that that's messed up. But um, and then I had that footage, you know, of the guy being thrown in. I mean, I I have wrestled with that. I tried to destroy it like three, four different times. I thought I destroyed it, and then it would pop up on a CD I found, or a DVD, I mean, you know, where I had recorded, tried to record it, you know, back then. And it just kept popping up, and I'm like, God, do you want me to show this? I mean, what do you want, you know, are you trying to get me to warn people with it, you know? And I just wrestled with it. And I, you know, I was talking to Laura, and I told her, I says, but you know what, I kind of feel like I know that when people were to see something like that, they're going to be awed by it. They're not going to be, it's going to maybe drive someone to the paranormal. So I look at this evidence, you know, and they'll want to, you know, share it with other people. You know, you know what I mean? It's that that's going to be behind it. And that's, I don't want that, you know, if it's going to take to uh, save that, then I I best just not even, you know, do anything (laughs) with it. You know, I'm just kind of waiting to see what God says to do with it. You know, if there's somehow something comes up, you know, but it's, it's, it's well, you know, <laughs> it's here's the thing. This is my experience is just a recent, the beginning of the year, I had close to 5,000 images of these demons. That's yeah. all that I gathered in one year, by the way. Wow. Cause I only started yeah. doing this last year. You know what I mean? Cause that's yeah. how much is out there on the internet. And, but most of it, you know, and I, and I actually, uh, deleted a whole bunch of it. And, um, because it was so sickening me, it was making me. I believe that they were. I was. It wasn't good for me. But looking back at it now, I'm like, well, I'm, so I'm doing it again. But this time, it's like, well, it's so important that I do put those images out, and I tell people right up front what you're looking at is not a creature. It's not yeah. some extraterrestrial being or whatever you want it to be. These are demons. Demons yeah. are real. They're all over the place like cockroaches. Jesus' right. ministry, a third of his ministry was dealing with these things for a reason. Because they're yeah. real. And they're not just, yep. you know, in some haunted place. They're they're most likely folks they're in your home, they're in your yard, they're all over the place. And if, if you don't yeah. call on the full armor of God and have God to be your hedge and protection against these things, be your fortress against these. If you don't call upon, you know, you know, you yeah. know, using the Holy spirit and even, you know, God's own angelic beings, his angels, his angelic army that he has there to protect you. Now I'm not yeah. saying to pray, pray to the angels, but what I am saying is that to call him a Heavenly father, that he would allow his angels to protect you you know, against these things because it's real and it's yeah. more real than anything. And these things are, you know, you want to know why governments don't work. You want to know why everything is just a big mess. Yep, I'm presenting exactly. you the reason why. Now, if you want to worship this and chase it and try to find it, you know, uh, I don't recommend that, but you know what? I, you know, it's, you know, you look at, you know, cause I, I read, um, Joshua, and then First and Second Samuel, and I'm thinking about all these wars, and what was the big issue about it? And a lot of people will say it's about the Nephilim blood and all that kind of stuff. But I'm yeah. telling you, folks, the real issue was that these people, these tribes, these all these different ites, were so demonized, so demon-possessed, and were practicing witchcraft, and that was the big issue. And we yeah. had the same thing happen again. And when people do this stuff, this is not my opinion. I ask you the simple question. At one time, 
Babylon was one of the seventh wonders of the world in its hanging gardens. Now it's a desert wasteland. What do you think happened? Right. What do you think happened? To the is what do you think's happening now in our world? Right before our eyes, we're being judged, yeah. and people are so blind. And God just lets these things take over. They take over. No, your 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 lives, your whole your whole being. They allow you to let these things destroy yeah, you Lord, because you yeah. reject them. You choose them yeah. over God. That this is what you're going to get: eternal damnation. And while you're at it, you're going to curse yourself and generations to come of your family because of yeah. your ignorance. Yes. Yeah. Of this whole yeah. topic, and you know, the whole topic is not being taught in the churches, in the schools. And so yeah. it makes people so susceptible to witchcraft and all these these false, these lies. Yes. These lying yeah, signs sure. and I wonders. So, yep. So what do you do? You You're know, it's knowledge. like at this point, we're, we're, we're in such a desperate state. And I, I believe that God has given us this technology, uh, has allowed this technology to happen. And although the evil one, you know... Um, He's using the internet for his own purposes, and most people are watching porn and all that kind of stuff and something stupid. At least yeah. we can get out to God's people, and a good yeah. chance, folks, you, you might be one of them if you ever listen to this. God will lead you to this message that there yeah. is a God. Yeah. He's real. There is a judgment. There's only one death, and then there's the judgment. I mean, you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. That's it. I mean, I know it sounds too... You want it to be more, well, you want it to, to cater what you want. But you see, we're not that important. We're the creation. He's the creator. Now, if we just get things yeah. rightly aligned, you yeah. know, we, well, so many people could not be subjected to this demonic deception that's going out here, which is worldwide and you just doesn't matter what it is it's television it's the music it's the the, the theaters there's all the books out there that lies about what angels are what witchcraft is what sorcery is it's all just fun yeah. and entertainment i'm sorry yeah it's really <clears throat> anything good. against god anything against god is antichrist spirit it is sweeping over the land i mean anything against god Wanting us to look at something else, look at ourselves, look at all this self-help, self-meditate, self this, self that. I mean, how demonic is that? You know, um, it, that it's all it is. Is it's it's purely anti-Christ. Uh, anything against Jesus, anything. You, you notice all the other religions are okay. They can have their say. They get, but when it comes to Jesus, <laughs> you know, they don't like that. You know, that that's the message that's not tolerated you know, amongst the unbelievers, you know, they talk about all this, you know, um, not being, uh, what do they call that? Not, uh, uh, not allowing others to have their way. You know what I mean? You're supposed to uh, not compensate. What do you call that? <laughs> oh, uh, there, you know, you need to respect Compromise. others. Opinion. Yeah, yeah, others yeah, opinion, yeah. Other people's yeah. opinions, other people's opinions, but the problem is, uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, the more and more you, you honestly, critically analyze that simple question yeah. or that statement, yeah. you realize yeah. that you really don't have your own opinion. That's right. You're allowed to compromise anything, uh, but you just can't. You can't uh, except you, you can't have Jesus. You know what I mean? You can't have that <laughs> because. Oh, it's true. It's, now, if somebody you know in the world, at one time I was. And Alcoholics Anonymous, and I would have considered myself an alcohol AA guru. And I, you know, I did the steps all the yeah. way through, and you know, six times, yeah. and demonized myself even more, and and was you know starting <laughs> meetings and all that other stuff, and <laughs> demonizing <laughs> myself. <laughs> but the one thing you couldn't talk about and was not tolerated, sorry, was Jesus. And I, this I is what happened. Know. I remember in a meeting, it started getting a hold of me. <laughs> And in the yep. meeting, we were doing the opening prayer, and I fell on my knees, and I went, "Oh my gosh, God, we're not to pray, not we're not all praying to the same God, are we?" That's right. You got, you know, I you're the, the same re- thing. Yeah, yeah you're the real God. You, so you were you in some kind of program yourself, or? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. Um, yeah, like I well, said, when all this stuff was happening, I mean, it wasn't just the footsteps in the middle of the night that my family went through. It was like 
my family was going through turmoil. I mean, every kind of way. I My youngest son, which was around like, say, 16, 7, you know, he was an older uh, teenager, uh, started having all kind of problems with his stomach, couldn't figure out what it was, bleeding, bleeding, couldn't find, took him, he went to the hospital, he had all kind of testing, couldn't ever find nothing what was wrong with him. He was losing weight, um, uh, drugs come into the home. We started, a couple of us was, you know, doing, uh, it was actually prescription drugs, uh, what do you call it, narcotics and stuff. And it just, it got out of hand. And, uh, you know, I after everything, after my deliverance was done, um, I ended up with a lump in my t- in my breast, and <clears throat> I went to get prayed for and everything. And it was the day before I went for my biopsy, and I got prayed for and everything come back negative. But I prayed and prayed to God, and and after my deliverance, like I said, all the paranormal stuff stopped. All the paranormal stuff stopped, but I still had that underlying problem with the pain pills, and. So I kept praying about it, though, because it, it, that's something hard to get over. You know, you feel like you can't do it. You know, the feeling you have is something like, uh, you just can't overcome it. So I prayed and prayed about it. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go. And, and if I have to go check in somewhere <laughs> and get better, I'll do that. I'm just, I'm over it. And I, I don't feel like it's pleasing to God. I want it out of my life. So <clears throat> I went and I did that. And I went to, uh, you know, a place for a couple of days to get off of it. And when I did, they a part of their program is you have to go through the those steps you know the the uh, na and 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 all that well while i was in there they handed everybody a piece of paper to read at the beginning of the um the sessions and the paper that i had to read that day i um of course i can't really remember it but it had something to do with saying although our schools our families and our religion have failed us and as soon as I read that, I looked at them and I said, I repent for what I just read. And I threw the paper and I said, you know what? My God is the only reason I am here. And my God is the only reason I'm going to be delivered of this. And I said, my God has not failed me. And I said, and I repent for what I just read. And that lady told me, we'll talk after the session. You know, but I just, I rebuked it. I Because that stuff is just, you know, it's, no. I They say that they look up to the higher power. As long as you're not saying Jesus is the only way, your Jesus fits, you know. And I'm not, no, I'm not, I won't have no part of that. You hold hands with them, and they're praying to their gods, and I'm praying to my God. No, you're not, you cannot sit there in agreement with people that are praying to other gods and see anything happen in your life good. You know, that's, no, it's, that's it's absolutely it. true. And I, I'm a living true. example of that. I met my ex in AA, and we have a son, and uh, she, uh, you know, I've told her numerous times, you know, you're not going to find God in AA. You're just not. You need to get right with Jesus. You need to find Jesus. And she won't do that because she wants to still have her, her, her way, which is basically to fornicate and to commit adultery and to do whatever she wants to, as long as she's not, quote, unquote, drinking. Yeah. You know, the, the religion of not drinking and the religion of not taking drugs or whatever, uh, you yeah. know, everything's fine. Well, no, there, you know, this is really just a symptom. And I yeah. I thoroughly convinced, the, uh, not only because of the occult background of AA, uh, yeah. And then if you look at like the talismans of the coins and all that, it's all witchcraft and it's all designed to drive yeah. you away from Jesus Christ. You know, you Thank can be you. an atheist, you can be a Satanist. I mean, the number of Satanists in those rooms was amazing. And uh, wow. you know, the number of people, it doesn't work. It That's literally right. doesn't work. I mean, it, you have just as much success in this world that stopping drinking by just stopping than yeah. going to AA. AA is a religion. It was a religion yeah. that was created by wicked men. They were part of the occult, and the Jesuits are involved, and in some other folks, too, in order yeah. to uh, get you as far away from the Spirit of God and who Jesus is. And yeah. that's exactly what it's done. It's yeah. exactly what's done. And people, uh, I mean... I by the time I guy got a hold of me, I was so sick. I mean, so many people in AA or this, they end up getting something. Yeah. There's a trade off. Yeah. 
yep. in the spiritual world. So, you know, the, 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 the demonic entities that are based in the, the over on AA, yeah, they'll give you relief from uh, drinking, but two yeah. to three years from now, something's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. Cancer, yeah. I got you know, with uh, MS, which I really believe MS is just, yeah. it, it's it's. Because they say, you know, it's interesting what they say. It says, Mike, you have legions on your brain and spine. Wow. And what did Jesus cast out of the demonic, the demoniac? Oh, wow. Legions. And they're just little yeah. dots that you find. And wow. you know what? That was uh, I still God trying to show you. You know what I mean? You know? It, it, when they said oh, yeah. that and you took it that way, it was almost like God was telling you, you know, hey, that's what this is from. And I believe no, that, I, too. When, 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 I, then when they first told me, they were, I'm talking back in 2009 was when they told me this. It's only yeah. this past year that I've been able to put the pieces together. I said, oh, okay, I was under uh, witchcraft. Uh, I had uh, sorcery done against me. I was demonized and probably uh, I was demon possessed. I was just full of demons. I was going to, a- to yeah. Unity Church. I was going to AA. I wow. was doing my own little thing. You know, and I was thinking I was a really great guy, you know. But uh, yeah, it, it, I guess according to the world and you know the standards that the world yes. has, yeah. <laughs> but I was not before right. God. So yeah, yeah. So, if you think yeah. about it, like even the Freemasons, you know, a lot of them think, well, if you're just a good person. You know what I mean? If you're a good person, um, that's all that matters, and they don't even realize that they're actually in a cult, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and, we and they're involved with AA as waters. well. Yeah, yeah. They are, but, um, yeah. They're all involved in it as well, uh, AA, and, and you know, just by looking at the yeah. coins and all that, you know. And the, the coin is a sigil, and it's actually a sigil from uh, that's it's been used by witches for. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. So, I mean, oh, wow. they got books of uh, of old, uh, you know, witchcraft and you know, sigils and symbols, and there it is, the yeah. the, the triangle and the circle. So, anyways, let's go, you know, so the so here we go. So here's another layer that's very important. I think it's very important that we that we discover this about each other and we share it with people because yeah. prior it's like you know. So you're having this issue, and part of what happens when you get demonized. Is that yeah. drugs, alcohol, some way to relieve the 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 uh, madness between your ears? Yes, yeah, sir. Because only the yep. peace of God, only the peace of God can actually relieve you of the worries of this world. Only the truth of Jesus will yeah. do that, and only His Holy Spirit can do that. You you can work your butt off all you want. But you're still going to be a schizophrenic mess out there. And yeah. <laughs> you're just going to be, yeah. you know what I mean? You're going to be chasing the whims of this world that will lead to your destruction. And you'll never be satisfied because uh, of yeah. the, f- the fact that it's, it's, that's not who you really are meant to be in the first place. That's you're, right. You're, that's being a right. Phony, you're being a phony. So, yeah. so tell us, what's the next stage in this? So, so you you had issues and family with... Um, yeah, of the world, yeah, and you know, things. Uh, the family just had all kind of problems. Um, my, I had um, um, drugs in the house. Um, almost everybody in the house ended up at some point, you know, getting on drugs and fighting that one. Um, and then, uh, and and you know, a lot of times, you know how they say demons come in packs. And, oh, they do. Not, not, know, it's just, it, by the way, that's an understatement. It <laughs> is. Ahead, it so <laughs> much is. <laughs> uh, because once you allow them in, uh, like say the drugs, okay, I'm just going to use a little analogy. You got someone that's out here, they're on drugs. Next thing you know, they're lying about it, and then they're stealing to support their habit. And in all this, they're neglecting their children they're, it's coming between them and their parents. They're no longer honoring their mother and their father. Um, I mean, demons are really just having a field day in their life, you know, and they're taken over. And it's like it's like that. Um, it what one time I had a an experience, and I know this sounds like probably nothing, but I. 
call it a burning bush moment. <laughs> but I was, I was one day I was sitting there. My daughter was having so much activity at night in her room. She couldn't sleep. She had, she had to turn on her radio up loud at night just to drown out the noises um, that she was hearing coming out of her closet and stuff. And it was just, you know, voices. I mean, just all kind of stuff. So uh, I, one day I was determined, I'm like, I'm going to go in there tonight and I'm going to do an EVP session and I'm going to find out what's in there. Well, I was try- I was thinking, well, if I go in there and, th- and what, anyway, what I did was it was just me and my husband at home. And um, so I go in their room and I shut the door and I'm sitting in her, you know, with a closet door open and I'm trying to, you know, communicate with whatever's in there. And I'm like, you know, saying, you know, if you're, it, um, do you believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh? Do you believe, you know, I'm trying to ask all the questions that people tell you to ask. And I'm sitting there doing all this. Well, uh, you know, after everything was over, I didn't hear anything audibly, you know, out loud. So I went there and I'm listening to my recorder and everything. And and it was kind of weird. It was like I'm sitting there listening to my recorder and I didn't pick up any paranormal voices, but I hear my husband in the background in the other room, which I didn't even notice it when I was, you know, doing it. But I hear him in there getting aggravated mumbling getting mad because he had anger issues really bad too and um you know getting really aggravated and just you know pacing and you could hear him out there and it was almost like at that moment I was like thinking to myself you know gosh these demons don't just come in through this paranormal activity they're the reason I'm having all these problems and our family's having all these problems in our house you know it was almost like God was it's just so weird because I'm sitting there trying to find out what it is, you know, and I'm listening to this recorder and I'm thinking, I'm looking for paranormal voices or, you know, whatever. And then I'm hearing my husband in there angry and pacing. And, I, you know, it was just like God was trying to show me, look, these demonic spirits don't just manifest as paranormal activity. They can come in through your family, you know, like with my husband through anger, through drug issues, through, you know, it was just, it was like it was like a wake up call. It really was. And I know, like I said, I know that people would hear that and say, "Oh, well, who cares? You hear something in the background. That doesn't mean anything." But it really did. It really did. It meant a lot. And it was like God was showing me something there, you know. And I thought, wow. And then, and then my son, my oldest son, he was in jail at the time, and he he was having problems with drugs, and it was just. And then my um, we were experiencing all kind of paranormal activity though. And me and my husband, we'd be in there in our room at night. And we would literally, like, uh, my grandson has always lived with me since birth, okay? He still does. And um, he, he was living there, you know, at, how, at the, that house with us and everything. And um, one night we was laying there, and all of a sudden we felt something get up on the bed. And we had a king-size bed, which was, you know, it's a big size bed. And I'm on one side facing the one way, and my husband's on the other facing the other way. And it like I said, it felt like somebody got up the bed and was like wiggling between us to make room. You know what I mean? Like they were trying to uh, make room, kind of like a you know a dog would even do, like to come up on the bed and you know try to squeeze between you. And I reached my arm behind me to touch my grandson, you know, just to you know give him a pat, and there was nothing there. And I looked over, and my husband was turned over on the other side of the bed, you know, and I said, "Buddy," and you know, and I said, "Did you feel that?" And he turned around, and he said. What was that? I said, there's nothing here. I said, I thought that was Buddy coming in here. My grandson's name is Buddy, too. <laughs> and um, and I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, well, we would have things like that happen. And then um, I, my husband started getting attacks. He would literally feel like something coming to him in his dream. It's what he felt like. It was like he was having a, a lucid dream. It was like so real to him. And he said that it was like a woman that had long red hair and that she would try to seduce him. I mean, to the point that one night he even literally was upset about it and woke me up and it bothered him and told me, he told me about it. And he said, I feel so bad. I, you know, it was so real. And he, you know, he says, I just, I mean, honest to God, it was almost like somebody that cheated on somebody, you know what I mean? And he felt so bad about it and everything. And I said, oh my goodness. And and then I, uh, it, this is totally like, crazy but I was thinking okay it's a demon probably you know and I was just praying about it and everything and and then um I went on an investigation with our group and this girl that was had just recently had joined our team like like maybe a few weeks prior to this 
uh, we were sitting on the porch at a house that we were sitting, you know, doing the investigation and she's talking to me and she says, um, yeah, my husband, um, he's got this woman that, you know, kept coming to him at night. Now, now I hadn't even told her anything about what I was going through and my husband was going through because I felt like that was something, um, you know, it was just embarrassing and it was kind of private, you know, I just didn't tell her, tell them this. And she started telling me about this redhead woman that was visiting her um, husband at night and how um, it started to become uh, violent to him and everything. And then, uh, but, but it gave him a name. And then she said, and I remembered that that name was so odd that I remembered being at a grave site because she was always, she was one that was uh, uh, big on doing the dowsing rods, you know, and, and doing that. And um, so anyway, to make a long story short, she said that she went down to that grave because she remembered where it was that she had went to and it had that name on that grave. And she reclaimed that that's her husband and to leave her husband alone, blah, 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 blah. And I was floored when I heard this because I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, it must have been an attachment. This woman has been in my house. We have been, you know, at my house practicing doing dowsing rod sessions and stuff because we would, one of us would go in a room and hide something and then the others would go in there and say, you know, please show me where blah, blah, blah is. And we would watch the dowsing rods point at it. You know, we would practice doing our dowsing sessions and stuff at my house. So I was thinking, wow, I wonder if when she come to my house, somehow that whatever the spirit was that was bothering her husband, you know, came to my house and now it's attached to my husband. You know, so it was just so weird. It was almost like when I was starting to put it in, you know, put things together that it was a demon, then this comes up. And I'm like, is it a spirit of this woman? And I'm like, uh uh-uh, uh, just something told me, no, this is a demon, <laughs> you know, because literally one night when he woke up and he was, he, I mean, he woke up and he grabbed the rosary beads and he was like holding them up in the air as a necklace. And he was like, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. And he kept doing that while the beads just popped in midair. I mean, whatever it was, it was just like trying to show us, you know. And um, so, and anyway, so after that happened, he had a bite mark in his growing area. And he was like, you're not going to look at this, look at this. And he said, what is that? And he, because he was trying to see it, you know, and I was looking, I was like, oh, my goodness, whatever it was, it left a bite mark on him. So I, I start, I was listening online. I, that's when I had listened to Laura's, uh, Maxwell's testimony. And um, I heard her testimony and her talking about how, these spirits was masquerading and how, you know, everything that happened with her and her dear mother, gosh, you know, I mean, that's so traumatic. And it scared me so bad, though. It was like, it really put an urgency in my spirit. We need to do something about this, you know. And um, so I, I was listening online and stuff, and I started listening to deliverance ministers and all this online. And I thought, well, gosh, maybe, you know, my husband needs a deliverance because he was the one that seemed to be the main object, you know what I mean? The main target to these, with these demons. So I finally told him, I says, well, we, there was another incident that happened where um, whatever it was, it, it literally showed itself to my grandson and he was only three years old and uh, he was in my room sitting on, on the bed watching TV and me and my husband was in the next room, what, you know, in the living room and something told me just to check on him while well, I looked around and he literally looked like he had seen a ghost. And he was like, um, uh, you know, and I, I come in the room, I said, what's the matter? What's the matter? And he was like, I don't know. And I said, what is it? What's the matter? And he he says, I don't know, a monster or something. And I said, there ain't no such thing as no monster. I said, I don't see no monster. Where's the monster? And he jumped off the bed and he started rubbing his hand across the carpet. And he says, I don't know it went in the floor or something because it, it, what it was was when I walked in, it disappeared and it was showing itself to him. And I was like, this was when I was like, this is it. I have got, you know, it, my husband was already getting physical attacks and I'm like, now it's showing myself to my grandson. Oh my goodness. I got to get it out of here. You know, I got to do what I got to do. So I told my husband, I said, we got to do something. And I said, please, let's go to a church or something and, you know, get you a deliverance done. And he says, okay, all right. Because, I mean, at this point, he, I mean, my grandson is his heart <laughs> and mine too, you know. So, I mean, it, it really just like, this is it. We got to do something. So, he agreed. So, then the next week, we went down to it. We went to a church. And while we were there, after the service was over, me and my husband walked up to the front. And we talked to the assistant pastor, which was also a, you know, a prayer counselor. 
and we talked to him, and I told him, I said, look, I said, I think that on one of my investigations, um, you know, I, a spirit followed us home, and it's tormenting my husband. And he said, what an investigate? What are you talking about? And I said, well, I said, I'm a paranormal investigator. And I said, and this woman, and I'm telling her, telling him about, you know, why I think a spirit had maybe come. He says, oh, honey, you got to stop doing what you're doing. And I said, what do you mean? And he says, well, you're, you know, being involved in the paranormal. He said, that's the occult. He said, that's probably the very reason all this is happening is, you know, that's given the, uh, you know, demon, demonic spirits the legal right to be there. And I said, really? And he said, yeah. I mean, I just didn't even think that it was because what I was doing, you know. I just kept thinking, what spirit is this that's aggravating him? I, you know, I, I, it just did not really occur to me. And, um, and I told him, so then he looked at my husband, and my husband had on a rosary bead necklace. And he told my husband, he said, why do you have that on? And, and he says, well, he says, um, you know, it's for protection. And I said, yeah, we got them all over our house. I said, I've got them hung up over all my doorways. All, I mean, seriously, I did. And I had Bibles open in every room, turned to, I think it was like John 3.16 or something. And I had even put, I went and bought some anointed oil, and I put it on the page of every Bible and had it, you know, in there and everything. And I told him this, and he says, please put that away. So my husband put the, the rosary beads in his pocket. And I'm sitting there thinking, we're in a church. Why would they tell us to put a cross away? You know, it just didn't make any sense. And I says, why? why? And he says, well, you have to know something. He says, when you put your faith in an object, you're taking your faith off Jesus. It's Jesus and him alone that's going to save you, you know, and deliver you. And I was like, oh, my, it's just everything just clicked. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, no wonder nothing's working because I'm trying all these other things. I mean, because I had tried sage. I tried so many different things. I mean, everything that you hear of, you know, and, but nothing worked. They would seem like they would go away. I mean, we would even say, go in the name of Jesus, and it would literally stop. It would, it would always stop, <clears throat> but it would always return yet another night, you know, and that's why, because I was, we were allowing them in because of what I was doing and what we were involved in and, and, and not repenting of it, <laughs> you know. There are repercussions for every sin, and, you know, all the things we were doing, you know, that was the repercussion of it. <laughs> You know, God was allowing these things to happen, you know, and um, we, and after that guy prayed for us and he did, he prayed, uh, prayed with us and he prayed, we prayed because I followed along with him. And when he started praying, I thought my husband, like I said, was the one that had a demonic spirit in him <laughs> that I, I mean, I'm sitting there expecting something major happen. Well, when he started praying and I just started feeling this sudden urge, <laughs> like no other urge ever that I had to get out of that church. I mean, I literally, it took everything I had to stay there because I knew I had to do it and I needed to do it and I wanted to do it. And I, and I was like praying, you know, God, you know, and I, and I was saying, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, leave in the name of Jesus. Leave. Cause I, I, I felt like the manifestations of both worlds, you know, I felt like the power of God was coming over us. And I, it was literally the demons in, in me was panicking. That's what I was feeling. And when he kept, he started praying with us and I started praying along, you know, leave in the name of Jesus, leave in the name of Jesus, you've got to go. And I, and that, while I was praying, I kept thinking to myself, okay, I mean, I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm taking this step out in faith. It's going to be in Jesus and him alone. It has to be in him alone, you know, because I had just learned that it wasn't because of what I was using and I had to just have faith in him. And when I prayed that and everything, it literally, all the feelings that I was having just broke. And it felt so much better, and I could literally, honest to God, <laughs> see it all for what it was at that moment on. It was like my, my blinders were lifted, you know? It really is true. When they say your, your blinders are lifted and, you know, people that can no, cannot see, they can now see, I know what they're talking about because <laughs> I experienced that, you know? Now, whether I wasn't saved before and that moment I really got saved or if it was like my just deliverance and I was born again, I don't know. But all I do know is that everything was different from that moment on. And when I got home, I couldn't get rid of my paranormal stuff fast enough. And I didn't have to, I didn't pray over my house. I didn't do any of that. It was me and my husband that got prayed for and it just stopped. You know, that's why a lot of times I know that people can own curse objects in their home. And because of that, you know, things can come in their home and everything. But I, 
I totally believe that most of the time with hauntings and stuff, it's the, it's the people, you know, it really is. It's the people that, you know, um, they have an open door, you know, somehow they have an open door, you know, to the demonic. And that's why the things happen the way they do, you know, um, but anyway, that that's that's how everything happened when when we got our deliverance done. So, but amen. Praise God. Amen to praise that. God. Amen. You know. Um, yeah. But so it just and 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 my family has struggled since, though. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I didn't have my kids there with me. I've witnessed to them too, and and um, you know, uh, they're doing good. They're they're. They're trying, you know what I mean? We all struggle, you know, but um, it was just so weird how the devil really had a, had his grip on my whole family. And, you know, people don't realize when they get in the paranormal and they are playing around with these demons and entertaining them and, 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 and all this stuff, they don't realize what they're really doing. And, and like I said, after all this happened, I got my deliverance done. Uh, you know how you just talked about how taking care of the symptoms but not the heart. It was the reverse with me. I had taken care of my heart. I had that uh, feeling that, oh, God, i got to get off this medicine I'm on. I, can't, I don't want to be on it no longer. My heart was fixed. I didn't, I didn't like it no more. I wanted, I wanted off of it. So I had to go, and I felt like, okay, I'll just have to go do what i got to do, you know, uh, to take care of the physical part of it, you know. Um, but Jesus took that out of my heart. He took my my wanting to have it, the the uh, cravings for it, and for the paranormal because it truly is such a it's something to be addicted to. You know, for somebody that's not a believer, you know, the, it's uh, it, they say that it actually your brain reduce. What does it say? It, it releases like a dopamine uh, chemical or something in your brain, just like as if someone's on drugs when they are experiencing these the high of being afraid, you know, it makes you think of like when you're watching a scary movie and you're sitting in your room late at night and you got your covers and you're up, up around you and you're watching a scary movie and it starts to get a scary part. You hurry up and cover your eyes, but you can't wait to lift it back down and look again. You know, it's, 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 it's a thrill seeking, thrill driven infatuation, you know, and it's something that I had. And I'm so glad when that, when that pastor prayed for us that day, he actually prayed, and so did I, about God taking that desire away from me, and He really did, you know. So that was wonderful. <laughs> Amen. So dopamine yeah. is what you're talking about. Dopamine release and uh, this. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think all, it's part of it's that, but I think also part of it is that it's just, uh, uh, the repressive nature of these spirits, too, or the oppressive nature is a better way to say it. And, um, you know, it's like, uh, I know, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to visit my mom every day because she's not well. And I thought last week they had a, a, a miracle and in the sense that she got rid of a bunch of her tarot cards and books on tarot cards and astrology. Now she's reading these books on angels, it's, you know, and they're all about, and they, of course these angels are all females, right? The images and all that, because they're all a false images in its own right, too, of what angels look like. Yeah. And then and, and it's a, it, 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 how angels save them instead of how Jesus saved them. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. so it's like in that spirit there, and when I'm there, I, I tell you, it's like I can't wait to leave. I can't stand it. The feeling of it is just like, it, yeah. literally, I just, just like a cloud comes over me, and I just want, want to fall asleep. Yeah. And it's not because I'm bored of my mom. It's just because it's, uh, <laughs> it is because of that's there, you know. And I pray, and I try to, you know, I, yeah. I do, you know, call for God to, you know, to, to remove the these demons are around her, but you know, she's, she still fights. Her, but she goes, I don't have any demons. And there's no demons. around. <laughs> like, mom, they're, mom, they're everywhere. There's like, there's nobody. Yes, they are. Exempt right. from, they're no one is exempt from what the, the, these things are, what their influences. And so, and, and think about it this way, brother Michael, um, when people talk about, you know, I, I noticed that like people will take the pictures, you know, um, and they're all, oh, let's see if any demons are here. 
or you know what I mean, like even the ghost hunters, okay? But the thing about it is, in reality, demons are around us all the time because they're always trying to tempt us. You know, there there is a, uh, I mean, angels are always around us, but demons have some, they have so much of a right also. But what can, the, what they can do now, that's another thing, you know, <laughs> uh, but they are allowed to tempt us. So, of course, they're going to be watching us, and you know they do, because if we do anything wrong, they're going to report to God. You know, they're going to, oh, look, think about Satan when he told uh, God about Job, you know. Oh, what about him? Well, you know, that's because Satan's got his eye on him, you know. Um, so we know that they're all ways around us, you know. There, There's no question about that. But, you know, as far as how they manifest or what they do, that's a whole different <laughs> thing, you know. <laughs> so. Right. And I was to tell Mark from my observation, for, and I, it's not nothing – that I can say that it's biblical, but I can say that from my observation, Mm -hmm. it seems to me that a lot of times uh, it's literally the people who are members of the body of Christ and believers in Jesus, there there seems to be even more of these things around you because they're just dying to find, you know, a a way to get to, to get you, you know what I mean? Yes, sir, buddy. And when you said that just now about your mom, that's exactly what I thought of is how they, when someone comes to Christ and they get deliverance done, wow, watch out because uh, warfare is on. You have kicked the hornet's nest and they do try. You know, like I said, all the haunting stuff stops. Okay. But they do try it in, in a lot of ways, a lot of ways it's through perverting of the Bible and, and doctrine. And they want you to follow a different way or they try to, I've seen people get saved and everything. They say, you know, they're following Jehovah Witnesses. And it's like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's like, oh, my, they don't even realize, you know, what's going on. They think that they're okay now. And, you know, and it's it's so sad. It really is. <laughs> you know, and the whole yeah. angel he said, oh, wow. You know, God gives yeah, angels me- cards over us, but we can't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> And it's it's real easy to do it, and the fall the fall the fall into that snare of religion um, instead of falling yeah. into the arms of Jesus Christ. And right. I know from my mom, you know, we we were raised Mormons. So that didn't help much either. So, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I remember you so, saying that. That's crazy, isn't it? Wow. Well, that's a hard it, one. Uh, yeah, you know, but it's. Um, it's a reflection of the world and how fallen it actually is, and so it's also is a reflection of the, the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ that He even cared enough about me, because He could have yeah. just thrown me away. He had every right to. I mean, you know, I'm 50 and years old, so I've lived both. most of my life never even knowing who He is. So even given it, yeah. you know, so and so, uh, yeah. So the. the, the, the this mercy that he has and it's the reality of the spiritual warfare that we're under and how real these things are and that they're everywhere and that it's so important for the body of Christ to wake up to this because um, yeah. you can't well this is my thinking you know because it's like, it's like God you know you know I want I want to just can I just okay now that I know it can I just move on yeah, <laughs> uh, basically put my head in the sand and say, but you know, it's like it's such a I I don't know what else to do except you know what, and I'm so angry at these things and what they've done to my life, yeah. and what they've done to my son, and what they're doing to you know my son's mother and and, and my own, my family and the people I care yeah. about. I just I hate these things with a you know there's it. There's a there is this thing of righteous and a holy hatred it's of these a holy things. Hatred, brother. <laughs> yes. And, and once you realize that these are the things that are causing all the problems in your family, and like you said, you know, once the you know the uh, say the quote unquote paranormal stuff stops, you know, the, what they do is then they go after the people. And every yes. time we get closer closer to Christ, they go even harder after the people and those that aren't protected. They don't believe yeah. in Jesus Christ and aren't truly protected by Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. They will, they're the ones that cause me the greatest grief. And it turns out to be it's family members and all that kind of stuff. And I have yeah. to constantly remind myself uh, that, you know, it's not them, it's these demons. And um, 
and it's it's so but it's it's the most fascinating thing watching this. Uh, yeah. How there's like this huge battle going on between the de- the I thought the demons still in my life, I guess, and but more importantly, the spirit of God and the demons in their life. And yeah. it's like, man, man, they just want to run. You know what I mean? Sorry about that. I just, <laughs> but they just want to run, and they just you can't you can't even have a conversation with these people. You know what I mean? The, the people I that care about. Those, Literally, because you know the demons in them is like, run, just get out of here. You know, they convince them yes. that you're the worst you're thing so on right. the planet. And really, the only thing you're telling them is you're giving them the truth. And yeah, Jesus and Christ. you sit and try to think of the best way to put it, or you're trying to, you're looking for that open opportunity <laughs> to say something, you know, to try. And you know, I have actually prayed to God, um, and I do all the time, like, please, God. Just give me the words to say or send someone, you know, that's ready to hear or, you know, just something, you know, just give me the words to say when, you know, because I've had times when I was at work even and, you know, stuff being said. And I mean, they would literally come and poke and mock me about God and, you know, hang up stuff above where I work at, you know, and, and mocking Jesus and stuff like that. I mean, I really went through some warfare, <laughs> There at the last, my last job, and uh, but anyway, I would pray about it. God, show me a way that I can I can minister to them, you know, and um, and literally He would do it. He would do it, <laughs> and I was like, wow. This one lady come in there, and she says, you know, I want to ask you something. And I said, what's that? And I mean, I had just prayed that day about it. She comes in, I want to ask you something about the, about something. And I said, what's that? And she said, I I kind of I look at you and Paul. There's another guy I was working with, and we were sitting together. It's like at lunch. And she says, uh, I know that I feel like if anybody's Christians, you guys are. And I said, well, thank you. <laughs> and she says, but I want to ask you, she says, I've been baptized a couple of times in my life, but I'm a lesbian. Am I safe? Mm-hmm. And I, right away, my heart just like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to say? You know, I, I says, look, I says, you just have to go with what the Bible says, hon. I, you know, uh, I'm not going to judge you or, you know, but God's the one that judges, you know, and we just have to look at what he says, you know. Well, is there anything in the New Testament about it? I said, yeah, actually, it is, you know, if you look at Romans 1. And, you know, and I I, I was trying to do it in complete kindness. And, and that's the way I would want to be treated, though, you know. So I was trying to share it with her in love. And you know what? The same girl that had really just uh, mocked us and, and all these things, she ended up coming to me and asking me about it. And in such a loving manner, it shocked me. But I knew that it was because of God, you know. So that's the one thing we forget. And, and I'm talking about me. I'm not, I, I'm not talking about you at all. But I forget. I tend to forget sometimes that we got to remember the power of prayer. You know, it's, it's so easy to just say, well, just pray about it. You know, people totally just take that for granted and just doesn't really think about how powerful prayer is. You know, and it's it shouldn't be last resort. It should be first resort. It should be the first thing we do. Um, you know, that's one thing my dad always taught me. Like I said, even though he got he loved his scary movies and stuff, he still, you know, he was always really in the church. And 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 he, he now and even now he's such a he has such strong faith and everything. But um, he always would tell me, no matter what kind of obstacles. Would I would come across in life, but I would call him up and he'd say, pray about it. He always would say, pray about it. And it just, it kind of put faith in me. You know what I mean? And it's, that's the first thing I do when I talk to my kids about problems and they, they get, and I tell them, I know you get tired of me saying, pray about it. But honestly, you know, God is the source of all strength. You know, he's the source of everything good, you know, so we have to go to him, you know. Um, we can't go around him and get our way or get good things. See, all good things come from him. So, you know, it, we have to go. This is true. It, and it has to be, uh, you know, like uh, it's six and a half years of like praying for my son's mother. And we're not together, obviously. You know, and, and the whole thing about, uh, you know, I think she's going through and just like, praying for her, praying for, for salvation and all that, and just to have mercy on her, free her from these demons and to protect my son and all that. And it's just like, you know, okay, and there's, cause there's a point you just like, okay, after six and a half years, uh, you know what my will is. I, I, I don't necessarily, I don't want her back, I, you know, 
it, things are just so bad. And anyways, I, I'm putting Jesus first, so unless you know, that's yeah. it. And that's just the way it's going right. to be. And then my son, that's and what? then you know, then it's you know, body Christ and people I talk to and all that kind of stuff. And anyways, and um, then, you know, but the thing is, you come to a certain point, you go, you just have to throw up your hands, and say, you know what, God. It's, it's up to you now, you know what I mean? I prayed and prayed yes. and prayed and prayed. I get, of course, I can still pray for him, but I'm just like... Yeah. But you know, you know I, might, I, 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 might, I might not get the answer that I want to. You know, there is there is the reality that um, some people are just... Uh, yeah. They will never, they will never accept Jesus. Now, does that, that mean I give up on them? No, you know, it's like yep. my mom. She's a great example, and although she is Mormon and she's got a lot of confusion, one thing she has always prayed for me and my family, yeah. and I believe that her prayers were honored. Eventually, that God finally got a hold of me. Plus, it's God's yeah. will to get a hold yeah. of me too. It's not my will because if it was my will, I wouldn't even be uh, believing in Jesus. I'd be still busy just screwing up everything, you know what I mean, making a mess of stuff. But, you know, he got a hold of me. So, uh, yeah, I guess the point of what I'm trying to get at here is that you always got to remember that God is in charge, period. He is God. He's the creator. We're the creation. It's his will first. And if you don't get what you want, don't give up and just keep moving on. And just sometimes you just need to... Uh, go a different direction with things, you know what I mean? And just focus on what his will is. And if you get what you want out of it, then that's, that's just gravy. That's just, but it doesn't mean that he's not answering your prayers. It's just, he's teaching you like a hard lesson. I'm learning is that, you know, a lot of people that I care about, uh, just aren't going to, yeah, you know, in the end, accept him. You know what I mean? Just like a lot of these folks are in the paranormal field of research and all that. My prayer, and I'm sure your prayer is too, is that they all come to the Lord and know the truth. But yeah. many of them won't. In fact, many of them will die before they even get that chance. That's why it's so urgent. You know, you were talking about blood being and uh, with your son and all that. And I, I, I can tell you, I've had that experience going out in the field and, and, and urinating blood. And I know lots of other people that get sick, you know, uh, you know, doing this stuff. I mean, this stuff will kill you, folks. This is yes, not just fun and games. These things yeah. will kill you. Their their whole purpose in life is to steal, kill, and destroy you. And they're going to do everything in their power to make it happen. And a lot of your sicknesses, and you can say it's the GMOs, and you can say it's the chemtrails, and you can say it's this, that, and the other. And that could be all contributing factors to it, but ultimately, at the end of the day, the devil and his demons want you dead yes. before you ever come to know the Lord. The Bible says that God uses uh, people, doesn't he, like that? Um, you know, when people are doing this stuff, it, it's a conspiracy going on. Yes, it is, but it's spiritual, actually, just manifesting in the flat, in the in the in the natural. You know, God, the de- the enemy is behind all that. You know what I mean? He's definitely behind all that. So really, even though, I mean, it comes out in the natural, it really is spiritual, you know, all that stuff. That's for like sure. One of the reasons why. The devil be behind that, you know. He, he wants us dead, you know. Um, he, he definitely wants us dead before we repent, you know, or come to Christ. That's for sure. But God will it's spare right. us if we, if we want, you know, uh, we just need to keep praying about it for our loved ones and stuff. And sometimes our timing isn't his timing and there's a reason maybe why it hasn't happened um you know i'm not saying that every just because you pray that they're going to come to jesus because he gives us free will you know so um but we just have to keep praying and praying that god will send them a messenger if they don't listen to us too because i noticed that uh people that i have tried to witness to and they didn't hear it but then they someone else went to them that was more um familiar with them or, you know, there was something in common or something uh, that for some reason they accepted the message with that other person, you know, maybe that's what the Bible says where you plant a seed, but another come and water it, you know, I don't know, but, um, but I have noticed that sometimes they won't, you know, so just pray to God that he'll send that messenger that they will listen to, you know, um, right. cause I've gotten frustrated with that too, man. I, I know a lady right it's now. That's important to the, 
to pray for okay. for them to be it's, it's important to have them pray for them to be released from the strongholds that they're under and part of that is uh false religion part of it is the people that is around uh yeah. and just all the deception that they're being told and uh you know, one of the, one of the kind. Uh, this is one. This is going to sound really bizarre, but one of the most kindest things that you can do to help somebody come to the Lord is to really emphasize the fact that they need to stay away as much as possible from the dumb box, the television, because that is Satan's altar. Yeah. And if you're wasting all your time, your precious time, mindlessly staring at the endless propaganda of, of Satan. And, uh, in, yeah. in, his, yeah. in his world, you uh, cannot be connected with the, the, the Holy Spirit, and That's you hard. cannot, you're not spending time in his word or in prayer. So, yeah. you know, it's like one of the best things that ever happened to me, too, was when he, which, you know, I, I think, was it you that said that you were raised by the television? My kids? Is that what you said? No, when you were a child, you were raised by the television. I uh, yeah, we, you know, yeah, we watch TV and stuff, and uh, you know what comes in must come out. You know what I mean? I right. that church, and it's so yeah. true. What people put in that's that's where they're getting their information from. You know, that's why whenever we get saved and 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 and, and turn to Jesus, that's why we really need to get grounded in the Word because. That other stuff, it's like the it's like the uh, the weeds that drown it out, you know, that the Bible talks about, that choke out the word, you know, because it's like it, you, this other information is coming that's contrary to what the Bible says. And although, I mean, it, and it does, it, there's some of the stuff on there that, I mean, even the stuff that talks about Jesus on TV isn't right a lot of times, you know, and a lot of people say, oh, well, they're talking about Jesus, this must be true, and they're listening to it, they're taking this stuff in as truth. But they're not testing it with a Bible. You know, we have to get our this information with the Bible, you know, God's Word. Yeah. You know. And, yeah, there's, so, you know, in, in fact, it, it's very rare that it ever, you know, in television, when it comes to those, quote-unquote, representatives of Jesus Christ that are teaching you the truth, it's, it's always yeah. a mixture of Gnosticism and and lies within just the name of Jesus. But anyways, the also thing is, yeah. too, is, so I was raised in, uh, with the television, and what I see with this next generation, and oh my gosh, we are such this this issue is so big. What we're under with this demonic attack is it's it's, it's a, a total onslaught. And one of the things is the everybody has a cell phone on, and everybody's staring at, it, and everybody's staring at the computer. I'm not guiltless of this, although I don't have a cell phone, but I still use a computer. But usually it's because I'm using it either to, you know, yeah. there's a, oh, yeah. a, a, a study, but usually it revolves around this, what, what we're talking about, Jesus Christ. And I can't even tolerate politics or anything like that anymore. I used to be a to- politics, political junkie. But I can't stand most of the stuff in the world anymore. And what I'm seeing is that people are under such sorcery right now that the average person literally is walking around there are people, literally young folks, riding their bikes up and down the street, and it's a pretty what well, street that I live on. It was a pretty busy street, okay, and yeah. it's close to downtown where I live, you know. And it's not a big downtown; it's just your know, traditional, uh, you yeah. know, old town. Anyways, in fact, the house I live in is 120 something years old, so that's just give you an idea. Anyways, oh, no. uh, the fact of it is, this girl, you know, there's one girl, she's riding her bike back and forth up and down the street, while handless, you know, with the, not touching the handles, and texting the whole time. And I was oh, like, wow. oh my goodness. That's, <laughs> we're in such a dire state because. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, these the, the I mean the demonic influence that most people are under they have no idea. In yeah, fact, they it's think like that there's not. Uh, <laughs> like yeah, and they don't. They, they don't <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 they're in tra- they're ensnared and trapped. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we really yeah. entertainment. What does that actually mean? Yeah, you know, this is right? to trap the mind. Is <laughs> to trap the mind and keep you from having any kind of connection with God. the spirit of God and God Himself. I'm totally True. convinced of it, and so, so it's wrong. so important to uh, release yourself as much as possible 
from these these devices unless you're going to use it to serve God and, and counteract what's going on here with the Prince of the Air. You know, the, 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 as we say yeah. today in our contemporary language, the Prince of the Airwaves. But whatever the case may be, the fact of the matter is, we have it. Th- this things are really bad, and people don't see it, and they don't understand what the real problem is. And they're focusing on man-made answers and promises. But you know what? It's all going to lead to everybody's destruction that doesn't come to know the Lord. And many of us who even know the Lord, we we might have to go through a heck of a lot. You know, people say, oh, I'll I'll have be beheaded for Christ. I got to tell you, I think the devil knows that too. And I think... That probably will be one of the last options for you. <laughs> I got to right. Like that. Yeah. Because he knows he knows once you're, you get your head cut off, you're going to heaven. He wants yeah. you here as long as he can keep you here and make sure he can get you to go the other direction. So I, yeah. I I just would just really warn folks in the paranormal community that what they're doing and what and it's an extension now of inter, the television entertainment with. The endless, the thousands and thousands of paranormal groups, and the shows, everything, that what you're getting yourself into is such a, a terrible net. It's such a trap. It's such a strong delusion that if you do not at least entertain the word of God and fall on your knees and cry out to God and ask him at least if he's real. Yeah. And if Jesus is real and who Jesus really is, you're, you, yeah, yeah, you'll go to hell, but it's going to be, uh, but in the meantime, okay, so you might get a few trinkets here and there and you might get your ego puffed up a little bit and people are like, well, you really know what you're talking about. But in the yeah. end, you don't know what you're talking about. You're deceiving more people. You're part of the problem. Yeah. And the definitely. only answer is Jesus. And so that's what I'm seeing about all these different groups, whether it's Bigfoot or paranormal ghosts. And the vast majority of them think that, oh, it's just fun and we're just entertaining people and we're just sharing stories and we like to be scared and all that. But it's real and they don't offer the answer. Very few are offering the answer, which is Jesus Christ. That's they right. want their they want their following their numbers, but I'm yeah. sorry to say those numbers mean very little. And if you're going to trade literally, yeah, if you trade your and, birthright for less than a pot of porridge, some yeah. numbers on a YouTube channel, or you know, uh, if somebody calling you up. Uh, uh, on a Friday night, asking you to come over the weekend to do some paranormal investigation and make yourself feel important. You want to trade your whole eternity for that. I have to tell you something. You're making a deadly, deadly and foolish decision. That's right. That's right. Nothing's yeah. worth our, Nothing's worth that. Our eternal life. That's, there's, this life is but a vapor <laughs> compared to eternity, yeah. you know. Well, let's talk about uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your once again your you got your uh, YouTube page, and I really enjoyed this, and I hope you come back again because uh, obviously yeah. you and I can talk, we can talk, and we probably could talk for uh, twelve hours straight. I can see already. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for brother, oh, yeah. Know, brother and sister, when a brother and sister <laughs> Christ get together and they talk, you know, when it's uh, you know, hey, chance to talk That's about right. Jesus, and you got to talk about the enemy. Uh, you know, it doesn't get any better than that, quite frankly. So, you know, that's how I see it. But you got uh, Exposing the Enemy, uh, the YouTube channel, and then you have the website, which is exposingtheenemy.com, but there's no E with it. And you're doing stuff with uh, Laura Maxwell. And what else? What, yeah. what else is coming up for people to look forward to? Any we interviews? Had, me and Laura, me, Laura, and Mark Hunman had. Uh, we did a letter. It was an open letter to the Christian paranormal community, where we are trying to show them, you know, what the Bible says 
um, in regards to the paranormal and these occultic practices of divination, necromancy, and things like that. And it's a it's a plea to the Christian paranormal community. So we're trying to get that letter distributed out far and wide. Uh, we're just trying to get that out there, and we're we at we will ask. I will ask for prayers on that too, that it will, um, you know, bring in some fruit and maybe, you know, it, it maybe it'll help some people, you know, that's our main oh, sure. objective, you know? And, um, but yes, me and Laura's actually doing a part three tomorrow. Um, it's, we're, we're recording it tomorrow, but I got another, a part three on her, on her radio show on the supernatural with eternal radio, uh, with Laura Maxwell. And uh, that's we're going to do that tomorrow, but it'll come out next week, I believe. Um, and I'm really enjoying that. She's such a sweetheart, you know. She really is. She has a heart for the Lord, and and um, truly tries to help people. And that's caught up in this stuff, you know. Her and Mark and Ivani too. Grepe, I think she was on your show too. Um, oh yeah. And, uh, she's she's going to be she on again on, on Friday. She's actually she's on. she. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. She's going to be again on. Friday. She lives close to you? Yeah, she lives in uh, St. Augustine. It's only like an hour and a half away. And I told her, I said, well, I'm going to be uh, coming up there and, um, you know, visit with her and get with her. And we're talking about going out and maybe witnessing to some people that's out there on their ghost hunts. <laughs> so, oh, I'm we'll, you know, that's need good. some boldness for that <laughs> one. But, you know, we're going to do it. You know, I used to go up there all the time and I was advocating for the devil. So I'm going to go up there this time and advocate for Christ. So, Amen. They got a wonderful, you know. Uh, yeah, and, and Ivani, Yvon, Ivani will be on my show Saturday to actually read her testimony. Um, awesome. She's got an awesome testimony. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And yours, you know. yours is written. Yours is written down too, isn't it? I think I put down. Uh, gosh, I, I'm not. I wrote down. I did some. I did one on spiritual cleansing techniques and familiar spirits, and I did um, one on the paranormal truth. I think it's on that one, the paranormal truth. It's called. Okay. It's, it's a long one, but it's you know. I also did it on video for people that doesn't like to read. Um, usually, actually, most of mine that I did was actually I did it in both. I did an article, and then I also did a video, so that way you know it would also appeal to the ones that just like to see videos, you know. So. Yeah. 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 Well, tell Laura I said hi. I will send her and you the uh, a copy of this when I convert it into a video. Awesome. And once again, folks, you know, uh, uh, Dana oh, Thompson Emmanuel. What's that? Yes, it's actually Dana Emmanuel. Thompson is my maiden name. Um, I just put it on Facebook that way, so that way people that I went to school with can find me. But um, oh, okay. Dana Emanuel, but that's okay. Um, and also, I really someone... would like to um, mention Mark's book because Mark Hunman's book, Seeing Goes Through God's Eyes, because it's only like, it's like one of a kind out there. I mean, it's so good about, you know, looking at the paranormal through God's eyes, you know, and, and what the Bible has to say about it. So I really, really encourage people to read that, you know. I mean, of course, we know the Bible is the number one source we need to get our information from. But that one is a really good one to add to. I I, I look at those kind of books like a sermon on paper, <laughs> you know, of the truth on paper. So, um, yeah, I think that would be a good thing, you know. So. Cool. Yeah. Mark should be on my show again soon, I hope, as well. We talked about it. So uh, I'll end the recording here now. It's um, the old religion dystopia, knowing versus belief. Thank you.